All right, what do you say we start things off with a bang? So this is my 1972 BMW 2002 with audio that I rigged up eight fire cannons to and put a whole bunch of propane in the back seat and then controlled it with a computer that then could fire it in sequence with music. So this is what the car looked like after I cut the roof off of it. And this is what it looked like after we put the fire cannons onto it. And this is just one of the things that we look at on the show, Outrageous Acts of Science. So people that play up crazy YouTube clips of building things and blowing things up, and then us scientists and engineers explain how they work. So that might be things like people that make jets out of their bodies, or people that ride motorcycles on waves, or people that just turn their cars into boats. I also have a Discovery Online show that I do, where I'm the host and the producer, and I travel around the world discovering innovations, technologies, and basically people that have really crazy ideas, people that are inventing the future. So some of the things I've seen is flyboarding, so it's basically a jet shooting out of your feet. So you can see here how he's using the jets to control himself, spin around, go upside down, dive down, go 30 feet up in the air, that's about 10 meters, and then I explain the science and the engineering behind what he's doing. There's other people that are using drones to map landscapes. This drone, uh, the EB, is mapping the Matterhorn. So the drone will go fly out around it, take a bunch of pictures, and it'll create a three-dimensional map of the Matterhorn. Um, I'm actually colorblind, and these are glasses that help co correct colorblindness. Um, I break things, um, my bones, quite often. And so this is a 3D printed cast where people can tweet things to you, and then those tweets are 3D printed into the cast around it. So done by my friends at Fathom, it's called the Hashcast. And then there's people that take cockroaches, live cockroaches, and they embed them with electronics so that they can control them with their iPhone. <laughs> so you can see here, this is a computer module that has Bluetooth on it, and it attaches to the cockroach, then it sends signals to the cockroach to get it to turn in different directions. You swipe to the left, the cockroach turns left, swipe to the right, the cockroach turns right. You start to feel kind of bad for the cockroaches. Um, robotic cooking instruments. You know, I wasn't that impressed by this, but I was impressed because it was very visionary. And the idea that a bachelor could just have something that could take fresh ingredients and turn it into a home-cooked meal, I thought was pretty smart. And then, of course, virtual reality. And actually, we're, this is being filmed in virtual reality today. So people will be able to watch all of you, as well as me, as this talk is happening. This one, you actually fly. So you're held up in a harness, and then you fly, and it's on your face, and there's fans blowing air in you. And it's meant to simulate flying inside of your dream. Think about that for a second. I love VR. I just finished a 10-episode digital uh, Discovery VR series. And so I was traveling around and meeting these wonderful inventors inside their laboratories. So everything from drones to making neon to people that take garbage and they turn it into sculptures. So if you want to see it, it's pretty cool. It's a Discovery VR called The Potentialists. So I wanted to talk a little bit about these people and how they invent, how they invent the future and how they come up with the ideas and give you some practical knowledge on it. Um, I actually had a TV show on Discovery Channel called Prototype This, where this was our mandate, was to invent the future. And so I would like to share some insights that I have from that, and then also I'll share some insights for some of the projects that I do for clients. I get called by people that just have crazy ideas and they want them built, and for some reason I'm the guy to do it. So let's talk about how you invent the future. I'm going to give you some very practical ways. For, one is you can look at needs. So to me, this is looking around the world and seeing where it's out of balance. And so I'm constantly observing and seeing places where, hey, this kind of sucks. How could we fix it? So one thing that I think really sucks, and we all know this in Shanghai, is traffic. Who likes traffic? Who doesn't like traffic? All right. So we're like, how can we solve the traffic problem? Well, maybe we could create a vehicle that just drives over the top of traffic. So we call this the traffic-busting truck. <laughs> it has omnidirectional wheels on the bottom, and then you can just drive over the top of cars, and you don't have to worry about traffic anymore. <laughs> I went through firefighter training, 
And you see me in the back there? You see how tough I look? Like carrying all the firefighting equipment? You feel really tough. And then you climb up a flight of stairs, and then you look like this. <laughs> it's exhausting. So we're like, how can we solve this? So we made the robotic firefighting assistant. It's electric powered, it drives up the stairs, and it carries four firefighters worth of equipment inside of it. And also me, because I'm lazy, so it can just drive me up the stairs. This is a personal airbag. So this is a safety device. So if you fall doing construction, this will save your life. So here's the idea. If you're up high, you're wearing the airbag. This is our poor stunt guy. And all of a sudden, you're going to go, and you're going to have to go fall off of this building. And so you have these airbags that are set up around you. And then you have pneumatic cylinders in the back. And as soon as you fall off of it, an accelerometer detects that you're falling, takes that information, feeds it into the computer, and then it deploys the airbags. So let's see how it works. He, he looks a little scared. He should be. This is the first time we tested it right here. <laughs> That's the personal airbag. You know, some inventions people think are kind of stupid, right? <laughs> but you know the little headphone, it's down here, and you want the microphone? See where this microphone is? That's where you want the microphone. So I just took a pipe cleaner and put it there. I think it makes a lot of sense. Another problem in the world is clubfoot. So clubfoot affects 250,000 kids a year, largely in developing countries. Could we solve this problem? So working with doctors all over the world, we created a prototype 3D printed brace that would help correct the, the clubfoot. And wearing it over a course of years, this would actually help the kids recover. Um, my PhD is actually in biomimetics. Um, so I look for nature, for inspiration. Um, I studied geckos. Uh, my friend John Mills calls me a gecko doctor. I don't operate on geckos. I just studied the gecko adhesive. And you can see the gecko on the right, and then on the left-hand side, you can see what I man micro and nano manufactured to mimic the gecko. So this is the first adhesive that you could turn on and off electronically. We also used a similar concept um, from the cockroach this time to make paddles that, where you could climb up a wall. And so each of these paddles has 1,500 little fish hooks in it, literally fish hooks, on their own suspension that cling into the wall and allows a climber to climb up it. This is also the first time we tested it. It worked. We're glad it worked. We love cockroaches for some reason. This is the third time the cockroach comes up. Cockroaches are incredible creatures. They're fast. They can run at 50 times their body length a second. Just think about that. That's like a human being able to run a couple, hun mile, couple hundred miles an hour. So we've studied the cockroach, and we've tried to look at different ways to mimic it. This is a little robot that mimics it. We said, could we scale this up to be a vehicle that humans could drive? So we made a six-legged, all-terrain vehicle. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we built it in four weeks, so that's pretty good. And here's a little video of the legs. <laughs> It's like, I want to climb inside of that thing. So another way that you can create things is just look at things that already exist and supersize it. So make it better, make it crazier, make it bigger, make it faster. Though it's a great way. So do you guys all remember the Rock'em Sock'em robots? So these little things, you push on it, and the robots bounce and punch each other. So we said, well, could we make giant versions of that? And so we created these giant boxing robots that Basically, you swing your arm, the robot swings its arm. These are little spider bots. Um, Intel made these. And so last year, I got a call from Intel and said, um, we hear you can build big things. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can build big things. They're like, great, because we don't know how to build big things. We're Intel. We make really little things. <laughs> and we got these little spider bots. And in two months, our CEO is going to give a keynote, and he wants to have a giant spider bot on stage with him. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you about demolition derby cars. So this is a way to treat people with road rage. So these are cars that we hooked up, we made remote control, and then we hooked ourselves up to all these biometric feedback. And so you could take all this feedback, and as you're driving the car remotely, it would decrease the performance of the car if you become aggravated. So in a way, this is a way of treating people with road rage. And as all you know, I have a problem with traffic jams. So this is the spider bot that we made for Intel. So working with Nick Donaldson here, who had created a little one of these before, I said, Nick, can we scale this up and make a big one for Intel? And he's like, why not? I'm like, two months. He's like, oh, I don't know about that. 
But we did it anyway, and so here's a little video of it in the, in the shop and actually working. You can see it's kind of creepy. And we actually got it all the way to, they named it Big Mama, to the main stage with the CEO of Intel, and it was the finale of his show. And not only did it walk onto stage and dance on stage, but we actually got it to rollerblade out onto stage with the CEO. Mind you, the night before, we were in the first dress rehearsal, and I'm there with the CEO of Intel, and I've kind of met him for the first time. And he's looking at this very scary large robot. And as we're performing with him, we lost control of the robot. <laughs> and it just started going across the stage. And I just ran and literally jumped and hit the emergency off, caught the robot right before it went off stage. And he looked at me and was like, is this going to be a problem? I'm like, no, no, this is fine. <laughs> no problem here. <laughs> So another thing you can do for inspiration and ideas are things that you're passionate about. One of the things I'm very passionate about is climate change and how, how do we deal with it. And so what's the obvious thing to do if you want to deal with climate change? You build a hot rod, right? Look at this sexy vehicle. It does 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. It's a 1933 hot rod. Well, the little trick to it is it's fully battery electric. So we put in a 440 volt power pack in it that could put out 250 kilowatts of power. It was a little scary, actually. And we won a SEMA that year for best green car. It looks pretty good, yeah? This is another way to deal with climate change. This is a Viking ship that I made out of a Volvo in Sweden. And then we dressed up like Vikings and drove through the Baltics. It was kind of an awareness campaign. Now, I'm not saying all ideas are good ideas. Sometimes you've got to try weird things, too, like snarks. So sometimes you get a little weird, and people get a little snarky with you. Snarky is kind of um, like being a little bit ironic in how you talk to someone. So I wanted to create sunglasses that really express that, kind of that upturned eyebrow, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I thought it was a little silly, but these things really took off, and people loved them. <laughs> um, yeah. You might even recognize this. This is, this is Ping Fu, who's quite, quite the amazing uh, woman who's uh, kind of revolutionized the 3D space, and she loved them. Uh, sometimes ideas are just bad ideas, and you end up with a broken leg. So this is part of the, the hazards of the job. So I have a little hardware in my leg now. And so when I broke my leg, I said, this really sucks. But what can, I, what can I do about this? You know, if you're looking for a need, something to solve, having a broken leg is pretty obvious. Um, and the problem with breaking your leg is when you get a cast on it, you can't fly unless they cut it in half and then you have to use crutches. So I travel a lot, so this wasn't going to work for me at all. So I went over to my friends at Fathom and uh, 3D scanned my leg and then went about 3D printing a cast. And in that cast, we decided to put in some electronics. So we put pressure sensors all inside of it so we could see if my leg is swelling or not. We put accelerometers in it so we could see how much movement I was. But that data just sitting on the cast is useless, so we connected it to the cloud. So all that information went up to the cloud, and my doctor could take a look at it. But while you're doing that, you might as well make an app for your cast because that's kind of cool. And if you ever have a broken leg, the first thing someone does is walk right into it. So we put LEDs in it, so it became a little light show. And at that point, I was like, OK, let's just put a sound system in it and call it the Boomcast. So this is my 3D printed cast with all the electronics and boom cast in it. And so to me, when I think about ideas and how you invent the future, I look at where life is a little bit of out of balance. You know, maybe you're saying one leg because you have a broken leg, or maybe your little microphone's not working that well. But this is a great way to be inspired for ideas. So I'm going to just leave you with one last one. And this is a category I just had to put up. Because sometimes things are just awesome, and you got to build them. So this is a water slide simulator. And the idea is that you sit in the bottom of this, and it spins perpetually. <laughs> and as it spins, you've inputted into it a ride that you want to go on. And so it moves up and down and side to side, take you on a journey in a water slide. And so here's a video of going down a water slide simulator. And as you can see, it gives you quite the ride. <laughs> this is my co-host, Joe. And I don't have the audio, but he's literally screaming his mind out inside of this. 
And it really tricks your mind, especially when you're projecting in front of you. And so I'm still wanting someone to fund building another water slide simulator. So if you know anyone that needs a water slide simulator, please let me know. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much.